of, of training and once you explain that, can you do pretty much the same thing that, that the Hogan did? Can you explain what got you into the business and who helped you to get started in this? But I, I, I'm interested to know myself, you know, how in the hell you get to look like that? You jack, bro. Man, this is coming from somebody who's twice my size. Man, I'm trying to get like you, brother, man. You see those arms right there? Well, all you gotta yeah. do is get fat, bald-headed, black, and ugly. You look just like me. Well, I'm halfway there. Yeah, one thing in the field, number one wrestling podcast here. When it comes to podcasts, they are the queen, the club. Yeah, dig it. Yeah, welcome to another installment of Much O Man Days. Yeah, and uh, today's topic, we're going to be talking about Halloween because it's right around the corner. Yeah, it's right around the corner and it's my favorite holiday and it always has been ever since I was a little tiny much. So what we're going to do is we're going to take another look down uh, memory lane and I'm going to show you some of my uh, childhood Halloween memories. And uh, some of my uh, creative costumes, because I always enjoyed making my own costumes and doing my own thing, not buying some store-bought type thing, you know what I'm saying? Always had the creative juices flowing, yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some of the ideas that I had over the years, and some of them are wrestlers. Yeah, that's right. And some of them uh, a little bit further back may not be, but... I think you're going to enjoy my uh, Halloween spirit, yeah. And at some point during this uh, broadcast here on the video scope, I am going to put on my Halloween costume, man, because you know what? I've always done the match thing for many, many years now, and that's how this whole match thing started. But now that I'm match all the time, for me to be match on Halloween, which I still will be on actual Halloween, but... I got a surprise for you guys, and uh, I'm going to have a little Halloween costume to show you a little bit later on, and I think you're really going to enjoy it, uh-huh, but right now I got some photographs, yeah, old school photographs, and I'm going to show them to you right now, I dug up some of my, uh, some of my old school stuff here, and uh, you know it's old when it's regular photographs, that are actually on uh, paper. Well, first of all, here's something that's not related, but I found this in my stash. And there was a few things I was looking for and I couldn't find, but when I do find them, I'll share them with you. But I found this picture right here, man. Anybody recognize that guy? That's right, long time ago, when I was a kid, I met Freddie Blassie. He lived right in the same town as me, as a matter of fact. He lived uh, like right on the next street from me in Hartsdale, New York, back in the day. And uh, I believe his wife, that's his wife right there. I believe that his wife still lives there in that house. And uh, sadly, Freddie Blasey passed away many years ago. But what a nice guy he was. Now, I just wanted to share that with you because I found it in my stash. Um, here's some pictures, and I know that I got more somewhere. But uh, for right now, here's a picture these first ones are unwrestling related, okay? But I just want to show you my creativity. You see that right there? Yeah, that's Freddy Krueger right there. That's me. And I made that costume. I made that glove. And uh, I made that mask. It was one of those plastic masks. And I put the uh, skin type, uh, what do you call it? Uh, like that silly putty type of deal all over it. I made it into a Freddy mask because it was a lot more fun for me to do that than it was to buy the mask and buy the glove and uh, wasn't being cheap. I just wanted to be a little bit more creative. So uh, that was a good one, man. That glove came out really good. It was made with uh, those, uh, the knives are made out of cardboard so I didn't poke nobody in the eye. Now, on to some of the wrestlers. Yeah, this is fun stuff. Okay, well, actually, first, this one isn't a this one isn't a Halloween picture, but this is me always wanting to emulate the wrestlers. And uh, this was back uh, probably about twelve or thirteen years old. Uh, you could tell it was a little bit before I started working out. But uh, that was me uh, in my uh, my impression of uh, Bret Hart. That was my Bret Hart kind of uh, stance right there. 
And uh, that was just to show you right there is that uh, I was always a diehard wrestling fan and always wanted to be a wrestler and always saw myself as a wrestler from way, way back in the day. So uh find some interesting things, man. Going through uh going through some of my old stuff, man. I never throw nothing out, you know what I mean? Um But it's kinda sad sometimes you go down memory lane, man, and you remember people and uh things and places and uh you know, you realize, yeah, you better uh appreciate appreciate things because uh, sometimes they don't last forever. Yeah, that's the uh match lesson for today. Now here we go. Here's a picture here, and I know that I have a better one somewhere, but I couldn't find it. I don't know where it is. But here I am, and what I was doing there was pointing out that was my first ear pierce right there, but I was pointing out uh, also that um, I painted my face like Smash from Demolition. That was the gimmick on that Halloween there. And uh, I hope you could see that when there's a reflection going on on the picture there. But, um, complete with mullet. And, uh, I just wore all black. I didn't have leather and studs. That would have been a little weird. But, uh, you know, every year, man, it was like, okay, what wrestler am I going to be? So, here's one that I really liked. Well, actually, wait a minute, wait a minute. Here's, here's some other ones that I dug up that... Okay, this one is non-wrestling related, but I think you'll get a kick out of it. If you have any Halloween spirit at all, you'll like this kind of stuff. But uh, here's me and a group of dudes that I used to work with. That's right. But it's kind of Macho Man related because it's YMCA, you know what I'm saying? The village people, you know, Macho Macho Man. And that's me right there as the construction worker. Cute, ain't I? Yeah. Always having fun on Halloween, man. No doubt. Love Halloween. Now, here we go, man. Here's some good stuff right here. See if you could guess who this character is right here. That's me. Right there in the middle. Right? That is me, and that is my real hair. Did a pretty good sting. And uh, there was another sting picture around here, wasn't there? Perhaps... Oh, I think that was one of the ones that I got to dig them up, man. I know I got more stuff to show you, but here's the good stuff. All right, here we go. Ready? Who's this guy right here? Uh-huh. That right there was before I shaved my head, because later on in life, I shaved my head and had a stone cold type dome. But uh, again, you know, made that costume, made the vest. Did that bald cap thing, didn't exactly match my uh, skin tone, but that's all right. People got the idea. And, uh, of course, that was complete with uh, my great Stone Cold impression, which maybe I'll do for you. Maybe I'll do it right now. And that's the bottom line, because Stone Cold said so. How's that? Yeah, I wasn't expecting that, were you? But it's a Halloween show, so you never know what to expect. Trick or treat. Yeah, that right there was a treat. Uh-huh. Yeah, now, 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 man, yeah, now comes, uh, now comes the beginning phases of when Mach did Mach for the very first time. Uh-huh. I did Macho Man for the very first time, but I didn't have, uh, you know, the, uh, the outfits that I have now. I didn't have the, the, uh, purple shirt and the bandanas and all that stuff. I didn't have, certainly didn't have the fringe and all that, uh, you know, 80s and 90s stuff, but what I did do was I created, created the look, and this was back in real time, because this was, uh, this was in, I, it had to have been 90, uh, 99, you know what I mean, 98, 99, because Mach had this look going on in WCW, and I decided that that was what I was going to do for Halloween, I don't know if you could see that. But I think that was the very first time that I realized that if I colored in my beard and uh, slicked back my hair, that I actually looked like Macho Man. And people right away recognized who I was, even in that outfit. And uh, that was the very first time. You know, leather pants, the uh, shiny silver shirt. And uh, when, I, when I first put that on, I went, oh my God, all right. I do look like him. 
And of course, by doing the impression and everything, when I had that gimmick on, man, it, uh, it worked. It worked pretty good. So, let's see here. This is a dark picture. I don't know if you can, if you can tell, you know, but I'm being surrounded by army guys here and I'm got the shirt open, showing off the match, showing off the match bod right there. I believe, is that my, uh, yeah, that's my girlfriend at the time. I don't know what she was dressed as, but she wasn't dressed as gorgeous George. So right there, man, Halloween. I love Halloween. Love it. Unfortunately, that's all the pictures that I uh, dug up. But I know that there's more, man. And uh, some of the pictures that I do have aren't necessarily Halloween, but I've always enjoyed dressing up. You know what I mean? As a kid, I had uh, a wild imagination. I always wanted to... Uh, you know, dresses, the people that I, uh, that I enjoyed watching on TV. And, uh, that was just the way my imagination was. So it's no wonder that I ended up doing what I'm doing now. And that I got into wrestling and I got into acting because being different characters for me is like, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's fun. You know what I mean? You can't always, uh, you know, not everybody could step outside themselves and, uh, escape and be a different person. And I like that. So that's what I'm doing these days, and I've always done it, and uh, I have pictures of me, uh, if I could find them, and I know that they're there somewhere, because I got a lot of pictures and a lot of boxes, and uh, just like stuff that I showed you from my wrestling, uh, that's like, uh, it might actually be in some of those boxes, man, I might have mixed them up by accident, but uh, I got pictures of me, uh, I was a big Mr. T fan, yep, and there's a picture of me as Mr. T. And I bet you can't wait to see what that looks like. Very interesting. Um, I always uh, always cut up my shirts, man. You know what I mean? Like uh, the uh, the fringes, you know what I mean? On the on the sleeves and the, you know, like the rockers and Brutus Beefcake. And, uh, you know, that, that thing was big, you know what I mean? In the 80s and 90s, man, everybody had the, uh, the shirts cut up. And so I would do that to all my shirts. And, uh, you know, my mom would get mad at me. And, uh, but I was always... You know, being creative, man. Being that wrestler in my mind. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, if you have a dream, if you're uh, if you're a kid and you're watching this and you have a dream, man, don't let nothing steer you away from your dream. Yeah. Do the thing. No matter what, man. Use your imagination and make it happen, man. Don't let nobody talk you out of nothing. Mm -hmm. Whatever's in your heart is what you need to do. And you will only uh, be happy if you do that. Now, that's another life lesson from Mach. Uh -huh. I'm like uh, Macho Man, uh, the uh, the uh, motivational speaker. Yeah, I'm taking the place of uh, yeah Tony Robbins. Yeah, he ain't got nothing on me. He's a little taller than me, but that's all right, man. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. I'll knock them right down. Double axe handle, elbow from the top. Yeah, just like I do. Uh-huh. Yeah. So as you can see behind me, I got the Mach World Order shirt. That's right. Things are a little messy back there, but you see some of my memorabilia. And this is my studio here, man. And by studio, I mean the corner of my studio apartment. <laughs> right. It's okay. Nothing to be ashamed of. Got a roof over my head. Uh -huh. Yep. So, without further ado, I think maybe is a good time now for me to switch up into my Halloween costume. Yeah, you're excited? Uh-huh, I know you are. Give me one second, and I'm going to come back with a big surprise, and I think you're really going to like it. But I don't want you to see. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move. I'm going to move this up here like this here. And I'm hoping that this is going to stay. Because when I come back, I'm going to have my costume on. Hold on a second. Let me get my, my studio situated here. Hold on one second. We're going to do the thing. All right. I'm going to have to unplug the thing. 
to do the thing. All right, here we go. Here we go. When I return, you're going to see a different guy. Man, I'm excited. This is my first time actually even putting it on. And I'm debuting it to you guys. And you're really going to like it. I'll be right back. Don't go nowhere, man. Yeah, don't adjust your set. Be right back. malfunction hold on hold on no problem no problem uh oh uh oh uh oh don't mind that you guys know that's just buddy oh man you're gonna like this you're gonna dig this a lot Quiet. <laughs> All right, I'm almost ready, guys. <laughs> this is wonderful. <laughs> One more second, and I'm good to go. Hold it. Keeping it in the family. I am the genius, the world's smartest man. You like it? I'm trying to work on my Lenny Poffo impression, but I'm not sure if I quite have it yet. I will continue to work on it, and when I do, I am going to present it to the world. What do you think? I hope Lanny sees this, man. I hope Lanny sees this because, uh, you know, I don't think many people do a Lanny impression, but there it is right there. You like it? I am the genius. I have the highest IQ. There is nobody better. Not even you. I think that's pretty good. I like it. I am talented. Man, the last time I wore something like this, I think it was a mistake. Yeah. So anyway, there's my Halloween treat for you. I'm not sure if I have this thing on right. There we go. I like it. Hey, Lanny, what do you think, man? Uh-huh. Man, now, now I've, uh, I've kind of like uh, gotten to the high point now. Where do I go from here, man? I don't know. I might have to do a part two of this session because uh, Halloween ain't that big of a topic. What do I do? What do I do? I don't know. I'm thinking, 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 thinking. Yeah. Um, I could do some more impressions for you. I know everybody likes impressions. Maybe that's what I'll do. Hmm. Well, you already heard my stone cold. Uh-oh. That's my impression of a dog. Look. Yeah. Buddy, what are you doing? You guys ever meet my dogs? Daisy don't like me to pick her up. I got two dogs. That's Daisy. Buddy likes to be picked up, but Daisy doesn't. Come on, buddy. Come on up. Come on. Come on. And then Daisy gets jealous that I'm telling Buddy to come up on my lap. 
I'll introduce you guys to them. All right. Well, listen. I'm going to do a to be continued. This is part one of uh, episode three, I believe. So I'll have to uh, come back to you because uh, for the first time ever, Mach is speechless. But I hope you enjoyed my Halloween episode. And I hope that everybody appreciates the genius. Okay. On that note, I'm out of here for now. I'll be back real soon.